are back with part two of reading through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version, TLV. And this week we are reading the introduction to Judges and chapters 1 through 10 of Judges this week. And we've already done the introduction. So we are going to uh, begin with chapter 1, Tribes Possess the Land. Now it came to pass after the death of Joshua that Benaiah Israel inquired of Adonai, saying, Who will be the first to go up for us against the Canaanites to attack them? Adonai said, Judah will go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. And just a little side note here, Judah means praise. So think about that. Praise always goes up first. He always sent Judah up first, even before, you know, in, in the battles. So praise the Lord. Um, Judah then said to his brother Simeon, come up with me for my to my allotted territory so that we, we may fight against the Canaanites. And I also will go with you into your allotted territory. So Simeon went with him. When Judah went up, Adonai delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands. They struck down 10,000 of them at Bezek. They found Adonai Bezek in Bezek, engaged him in battle, and defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Though Adonai Bezek fled, they pursued him, caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his big toes. So Adonai Bezek said, 70 kings having their, their thumbs and big toes cut off used to pick up scraps under my table, as I have done, so God has repaid me. They brought they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. Then the children of Judah attacked Jerusalem, captured it, struck it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. Afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the hill country, in the Negev, and in the lowland. Judah then marched against the Canaanites who dwelt in Hebron. The former name of Hebron was Kiriath Arba, and they defeated Shesha, Ahiman, and Talmai. From there, Judah marched against the inhabitants of Debir. The former name of Debir was Kiriath Sefer. And Caleb said, Whoever attacks Kiriath Sefer and captured it, to him will I give my daughter Aksa for a wife. So Othmiel, son of Kenaz, that's K E N A Z, Caleb's younger kinsman, captured it. So Caleb gave him his daughter Aksa as a wife. Now it came about when she came to him, she had persuaded Othniel to ask her father for a field. When she got off from off her donkey, Caleb asked her, what do you need? Give me a blessing, she said, for you have given me land in the Negev. You should also give me springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. The children of the Kenite, Moses's father-in-law, went up with the children of Judah from the city of, of Palms to the wilderness of Judah, which is in the Negev of uh, Arad. They went and settled with the people. Then Judah went with his brother Simeon, and they defeated the Canaanites that, in, that inhabited Zephath. Zeph, Zeph. They utterly destroyed it, and thus the names of the city was called Horma. Also Judah Judah captured Gaza with its territory, Ashkelon with its territory, and Ekron with its territory. Adonai was with Judah, and he possessed the hill country, but he could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had iron chariots. Then they gave Hebron to Caleb, as Moses had promised, so he drove out from there the three sons of Anak. We're talking about giants. We're going to talk about Anak. But the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites who inhabited Jerusalem. So the Jebusites continue to live with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. Also, the house of Joseph marched against Bethel, and Adonai was with them. The house of Joseph sent men to spy out Bethel. The former name of the city was Luz. Now the scouts also saw, the scouts saw a man coming out from the city, and they said to him, Please show us the entrance into the city, and we will deal kindly with you. So he showed them the entrance into the city, and they struck the city with the edge of the sword, but they let the man go free with all of his family. 
So the man went into the land of the Hittites, built a city, and named it Luz, which is its name to this day. Manasseh, however, did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and its villages or, or Tanakh, T-A-A-N-A-C-H, and its villages or the inhabitants of Dor and its villages or the inhabitants of Ibim and its villages or the inhabitants of Megiddo and its villages. So the Canaanites resolved to dwell in that land. When Israel became strong, they put the Canaanites to forced labor but they did not drive them out. Nor did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites who were living in Gezer. Gezer. So the Canaanites settled in Gezer among them. Nor did Zebulon drive out the inhabitants of Ketron or the inhabitants of Nahalol. So the Canaanites settled among them, but became subject to forced labor. Nor did Asher drive out the inhabitants of, of Akko, that's A-C-C-O, or the inhabitants of Zidon, Aklab, Akzib, Helba, Afik, or Rehob. So the Asherites lived among the Canaanites who were dwelling in the land because they did not drive them out. Nor did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemash, or the inhabitants of Beth Anna, but lived among the Canaanites dwelling in the land, though the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and Beth Anath became forced to labor for them. But the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the hill country, for they would not let them come down to the valley. Also, the Amorites persisted in dwelling in Mount Heres, H-E-R-E-S, in Ajalon and in Shalbim. But when the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed, they became forced labor for them. So the territory of the Amorites ran from the accent of Akrabim from the rock and upward. And that's the end of chapter one. So it's actually going on, you know, since Joshua passed away, they're actually talking about of how they um, came to inhabit their land that was promised to them. So we're going to go on to chapter two. After Joshua, Israel abandons Adonai. Now the angel of Adonai came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and he said, I brought you up out of Egypt and took you into the land which I swore to your fathers. I also said, I will never break my covenant with you. Now for you must make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You must break down their altars. You have not listened to my voice. What is this you have done? Therefore, I also said I will not drive them out from before you, but they will be thorns in your sides, and their gods will be a snare to you. Now, when the angel of Adonai spoke these words to all Benai Israel, the people lifted up their voice and wept. So they called the, they called the name of that place Bochim, and that is B-O-C-H-I-M, and they sacrificed there to Adonai. Now, when Joshua had sent the people away, Benaiah Israel went every man to his inheritance to possess the land. Then the people worshipped Adonai all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great work of Adonai that he had done for Israel. So that could have been quite quite some time, too. Um, then Joshua, son of Nun, the servants of Adonai, the servant of Adonai, died at the age of 110 years. And they buried him in the territory of his inheritance in Timnath Heres, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. But when all that generation were gathered to their father, their fathers, there arose another generation after them that did not experience Adonai or the work that he had done for Israel. Then Benaiah Israel did what was evil in Adonai's sight. In his eyes and worship the worship the Balaam. They abandoned Adonai, the god of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods from among the gods of the peoples around them and bowed down to them. So they provoked the anger of Adonai. So they forsook Adonai and worshiped Baal and the Ashtaroth. So the anger of Adonai burned against Israel. And he gave them over to the hands of plunderers who plundered them. And he sold them over into the hand of their enemies around them 
so that they could no longer stand up before their enemies. Whenever they went out, the hand of Adonai was against them for evil, as Adonai had spoken, and as Adonai had sworn to them, so they were severely distressed. The second part of chapter 2 is the rise of judges. Then Adonai raised up judges who delivered them from the hand of those who plundered them. Yet they listened not to their judges, for they prostituted themselves after other gods and bowed down to them. They quickly turned aside from the way in which their fathers walked in obeying the commandments of Adonai. They did not do so. Whenever Adonai raised judges up for them, Adonai was with the judge and delivered them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For Adonai was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who oppressed and crushed them. But when the judge died, they would keep turning back and acted more corruptly than their fathers in following other gods, worshiping them and bowing down to them. They abandoned none of their practices and stubborn ways. So the anger of Adonai burned against Israel, and, de- and he declared, Since this nation has transgressed my covenant that I commanded their fathers and has not listened to my voice, I also will no longer drive out before them any of the nations that Joshua left when he died in order to test Israel by them, whether or not they will keep the way of Adonai to walk in it as their fathers did. So Adonai left those nations without driving them out quickly. Thus, so he had not given them into the hand of Joshua. Okay, so that is the end of chapter 2. And I'm going to just pause it for a moment to do a little bit of recapping here. 